Ladies and gentlemen, boys and baby girls, it's an extra exciting episode until raccoons steal all your food in the morning. You know, it's one thing to be robbed, but by the people that you trust most, I trusted you, Ben. <laughs> Governor. No, that I'm coming correct. Let me talk to you guys about something that they can do both drunk and high that is extremely pleasant. I think our podcast needs a budget for guns. Kale, boy. Rowdy. Well, shoot, dang. Crack a cold one, baby. What is it with this fucking podcast? Hey, it's your host, KBZ Berry. Thank you for joining us. Also joining us today, Monterey Bay comic and show producer, Michael Booth. What's up? Thank you for joining us, sir. How you been? I've been pretty good, man. Just uh, hanging in there. The, sky, the sky's getting clear now. It's nice. Oh, you can we got see beach the, weather back. See the hillside. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I still ain't going to the beach, but it's cool to know I can. Also joining us, <laughs> Sebastian McCabe, studio engineer and Phantom of the Closet. Yes, that's me. I, uh, I, I've got to leave leave the door open because otherwise I can't get back in because I don't have the key. <laughs> You could be B real for so many horror movies of like someone getting attacked <laughs> on a thing by someone in the closet. Just like in the background. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We just crop a couple little things in and boom, you're every horror murder scene. This has become when a recurring shit goes theme. Down. <laughs> <Be ready. laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> I don't know the reference, but I like it. <laughs> also joining us, first time on the show, Santa Cruz comedian Audrey Hebert. Hey! Thank you so much for joining us. This is a treat. We don't Thank usually you. get to. Uh, yeah, happy to be here. Yeah, we don't you get to talk to people. It's been just us for a while because the whole quarantine. But I feel bad though because you're not getting the full experience, and I shouldn't have advertised this without like being able to deliver. But I have a giant cat and a dog, and they're both adorable. Huge they're little cat. food balls. Cat. It's Huge a very cat. big cat. Um, and when you come over, they cuddle and they they play on you, and it's fun and it's adorable. And so next time. We'll try and get you in person so you can enjoy the full flu fest. Uh, it would be lovely. But thank you for being here. Thank you. Yeah, I uh, love to see the cat and dog next time. Is the cat bigger than the dog? No, but the dog is big. The dog is a very big pit bull, and the cat is close in size. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like maybe the dog's maybe only like 10 or 15 percent bigger. So I was going to say, big... yeah. I was going to say it's like three quarters of the size of Max. There's Although a... also, too... The cat is like so long haired. I don't know how much cat is like actually in there and how much of it is just fur. <laughs> true. Yeah, yeah you shave like, the you cat shaved... and it's just a rat. <laughs> this is true. This is all true. And the thing is, I, there's a video or uh, picture you can see on my uh, girlfriend's Instagram that she's laying down and the cat is laying down next to her and like she's trying to do yoga and he came to cuddle with her. The cat is like 70% of the length of my girlfriend. Like, he's, like, her head's here, and his tail is, like, close to her feet. And it's, like, <laughs> Like, I took a photo, because we see it at that angle. It's, like, oh, my gosh. They're, like, very similar. He could replace size. Cameron as the big spoon at night. That's all we're, that's all we're he saying He does, okay? <laughs> Between him and the dog, I'm not even on the bed. It's not even fair. I sleep on the couch. <laughs> yeah, Jesus no, sleep Christ. on the couch, I'm sorry. I, yeah. I'm not even a bed in my house. You know what comes after beta? The cuck, okay? And I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Cucked Christ. by my cat. <laughs> yeah. The sequel to My Cat from Hell. Oh, that's so funny. I was hoping it was the sequel to Puss in Boots. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's the porn parody. <laughs> yeah, Boots in Puss. <laughs> and <cucked by> my... <laughs> boots in Puss, dude. That's fucking... <laughs> Can we... Oh, no, I'm not, I, I was gonna say, can we find out if someone's done that already? But I actually, I don't want to know. Yeah, I yeah, we can. I think I got. I think I actually have some information on that here. I'll put it on the screen really quick. Um, oh no, no, one second. It can't. it's coming. It's coming on the screen. Yeah, this. I think this is exactly what we're talking about. Um, okay, here. Okay, we're gonna watch for cameras. Can you guys see this? Can everybody see here. this? Okay, I don't know. I yeah. Really hope this isn't what I think it's gonna be. Is this what we were? Oh, is that Conor McGregor? Why is he beating up that man? Oh my God! Why? Is, why is that man watching? <laughs> Who's this old guy? What is? What is Conor McGregor doing in Spain, in Madrid? Oh no! This has nothing to do with what, what we were happening? talking about. But this is apparently what's is he happening pull around. Out boots soon. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, uh. I had to clean out the taste of porn out of my mouth. <laughs> Oh my goodness. 
<laughs> this is insane. <laughs> this is my favorite Damn. thing. This has <laughs> the reason I brought this up is this video has currently um what is it? It has twelve times as many views as our show does. In whole. Yeah, in its nice. entirety. <laughs> I, 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 I feel like we should explain for for our audio only listeners what what we No, just explain nothing. <laughs> Okay, uh, if, if you insist, that'll... We're taking a new it angle. Was like we're a, abandoning yeah, our Yeah, that base. was like... It was like watching Hancock, but it was just Conor McGregor instead of Will Smith. That's what I felt like I just yeah, saw. Being like, <laughs> yeah, being like... Okay, that was just a little... That was a little cultural palate cleanser of mine. Um, oh, no, never mind. I, I said that on the last let, episode. Let's get into Audrey, because I'll say this. I've seen you now twice, Audrey, at, at comedy shows. But I don't think Mike or Seb's had the chance yet. But I was enthralled. The first time I heard you, you had great setups, great jokes. Your delivery was amazing. And you looked too young to have that together as a package. So how did you get into comedy? How does this, how did you get to this stage? Oh, thank you. I mean, I'm I'm 21, but I look like I'm 12. Like, I look, mm. I look like, like a 12-year-old whose parents got her an internship at BuzzFeed. <laughs> 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 yeah, fits the bill. You have a blog on Medium or something? Yeah. <laughs> intern for, for Jezebel. Yeah, like, ten, ten ways that mansplaining interrupts my acai bowl. <laughs> <laughs> when I'm trying to study in the coffee shop. Oh, oh so man, I'm a walking BuzzFeed article, so I'm just trying to like, keep low when people start talking about it. I'm like, Ugh. <laughs> just close my legs and shut the fuck up. <laughs> and, uh, so how'd you get into comedy? When was your first like before you venture whatever into comedy? Um, I actually, well, I took a creative writing class in high school, and we would always have these things where we'd have to share our writing, and I don't people would be doing all this like confessional poetry and stuff about like their their breakups or like my, oh, I don't know, my pain in my heart. And gravity I gravity of life in high school. Yeah, oh, you know, 16, man, it's rough. And um, I just, I don't know, I couldn't really do any of that. So I would, I would always feel really self-conscious talking about anything super personal. So instead I would write these kind of like funny stories. I don't know how funny they were in hindsight. I thought they were funny in junior year of high school. And... <laughs> I would read those and I actually got a really good reaction from people. So I was kind of like, oh, cool. I can kind of yeah. like uh, use this for social yes. gain, maybe. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> to build up social capital. I can underestimate the F out my, of my power. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I can monetize my insecurities. Hell yeah. And, uh, but then when I got to college, I go to UC Santa Cruz and I joined the Humor Magazine, which is Fish Wrap. Okay. And okay. so a, that was a lot of fun. Of the West Coast. Oh, sorry, what was that? It's like West Coast Lampoons. Yeah, kind of like a, like, I don't know, the lampoon for, like, dirt bags smoking weed on the couch, like, slacker <laughs> lampoon. For students. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, so I joined Fish Rap, and I met a lot of really funny people there, and that's actually where I met Sam Weber. Um, oh, awesome, and, Sam. Uh, who, yeah, he's big in the Santa Cruz comedy scene, he's involved in a lot of the Mike's and the first time that I oh, met yeah. him I don't he probably doesn't remember this but he was talking about doing comedy and I was like oh that's really cool I've always wanted to try that and he handed me his business card oh my god but I guess he just had stuff. on him yep that sounds like Sam <laughs> that sounds like Sam yeah <laughs> and um so he started a club on campus for um people who wanted to do stand-up so I got involved in that and I did a few campus open mics and I was really nervous the first few times and it went I don't know it wasn't it wasn't great it was uh did that my make first you want to make it were, great were you like what? competitive because of that when it when it didn't go your way did it drive you like oh well, I'm yeah be, definitely yeah. I know yeah it made me think like okay I think I can do this it's just shitty right now because I'm just starting out okay. and then I could gradually feel myself getting better at it and then I finally got up the nerve to do open mics downtown and i i was super nervous about that at first because i'm like oh i'm just this like really i'm 
like so much younger than everyone else and i'm like right. the like only the girl here like what am i doing i don't belong here but i just kind of made myself what was the first spot go where, where was your first uh spot? the first first mic i ever did i think it was at rosie mccann's oh, okay oh, that's nice. a nice spot Hell yeah. but that's a that's and, an intimate setting though you can see everyone's face you're right there like you know yeah, a exactly lit. the it's crowd small. and what's going on yeah yeah and i also i got put up like dead last which makes sense because that's what they do when you're first starting out i mean you're They're not going to be headlining if it's your first time but so i was at the very end of the night and there were like three people mm-hmm. left yep. but um i don't know i right. think i made a good impression on the host so i ended up going back there awesome the impression on the host that's can awesome. be more important than the impression on the crowd uh, depending on the, the venue and such so that's good. That's good. So how how long ago was that? Because was that right when you got into college, or did you take a little bit of break to do other stuff first? That was kind of uh, that was like January of 2019. So that would have been in the middle of my sophomore year of college. Uh, yeah, okay. I was just kind of gradually easing oh, into man. it. So you've only got. So like I don't want to good... embarrass myself. Oh yeah, no. It's so funny that at, at your age, like I don't want to embarrass myself. It's like, oh my god, <laughs> I would have killed to have started at your age. You have no idea, like <laughs> literally. Gotta jump on it. Yeah, take both mm-hmm. balls. They're useless. Just let me start at nineteen. Jesus Christ. <laughs> uh, so I had those super cool. Like I had the same thing where I was worried, like, oh, I don't want to set a bad impression and stuff. But that's cool. That you were setting good impressions and doing it early. Uh, do you have a favorite venue in Santa Cruz downtown area? Is there a favorite spot of yours that you've gone since you've been going to open mics? Um, well, DNA's Comedy Lab is obviously a cool place. And then I also like yeah. Santa Cruz Mountain Brewing a lot. I feel like the crowd there is usually pretty good because they're, they're like a little bit drunk, but it's also, it's light <laughs> outside. So people have to like be accountable for their actions. Yeah. The accountability to say, Wednesdays, to that's the whole, that's comedy. People don't talk about yeah, it. Yeah, Wednesdays comedy. at the Mountain Brewery, it was like, it was an $8 liter night. So you can get a 32 ounce beer for eight bucks. Oh my gosh. Uh, That's like I big remember, gold prices. I love the Mountain Brewery. Not... Like that was one of my favorite places to do uh to do comedy. Like yeah, shout was, out to Harag. It was popping. Mm-hmm. Harag, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Harag's great. That's cool. That's yeah, so so awesome to, to just to see the development. And I've only seen you twice. One thing that impressed me though, for I, the first one was related to DNA's comedy lab. Great show. I saw you again, like a little while later. And you had different stuff. You already have like new material, and a lot of people, especially when they're first starting out, will have like just a core thing, and they just try it and try it to get it better and better. But you were you were doing a lot of different stuff. Are you someone who writes regularly, or do you just do a lot of improv while you're there trying new things, or what, what's kind of your system thus far? Yeah, actually, that probably wasn't all new material the second time. I just I have this big Google Doc that's just a list of all of my jokes it's super jumbled and not organized (laughs) at all so if i just think of anything i'll write it down in there and then i go back and do old stuff a lot if because sometimes i'll do something and it it bombs and then i'll be like oh i don't want to do this for a little while i just want to do the things i'm comfortable with but then if i think of a better tagline or if i'm doing a crowd that i think that joke would work better for then Mm -hmm. i'll go back and bring it back again it's nice that's one thing that it's weird to relate them, but that's where I can relate comedy to jujitsu. Because you'll learn a trick in a class that you won't <laughs> use for like six, eight, nine months. And then all of a sudden, someone will be there and like, oh, this guy's susceptible to this. Bang. And then, like, I've learned lessons now about, like, I did a, sh- a little open mic. What's the Mi Familia, I think it is? The, the Italian restaurant in Santa Cruz area? Oh, yeah. So go in there. It's like one of the earliest ones they, they just start doing them. And I go in there and I have all these great jokes about a tinder i got this great joke about uh you know online dating a pedophile on accident i got all these funny stuff and i'm like this is gonna kill and i go in there and i get like 10 seconds into my material and i realize i'm doing it for all people over the age of 60 oh yeah and most of them look like they're in 30 year relationships <laughs> and i'm like yeah, these people have <laughs> they have no idea what you're talking no about. one out here has tinder like two of the husbands What's have grinder yeah. but they're trying to hide it like no one's gonna laugh at nothing so i don't know so i can totally bond but i had something to fall back on. it's like a kind of an old person material thing that i was able to kind of fall back on that is something i use to kind of relate to people who are senior to me in a lot of situations and having that little like secret thing in the back that maybe didn't work in this setting, but you remember it and it's back there and you're looking for an angle where it does work. That's like a, Oh, that's like the secret jujitsu of comedy. I love it. It's beautiful to hear. That's, I, I, I kind of like what to add to what you're saying. 
Um, that I kind of like. Uh, I don't like to go first and ever because for this no, exact reason, I, I like to watch a couple people and kind of see what the crowd is getting because I think that informs you a lot on you know like you're saying you may have something that works somewhere else, but I think that uh, you know getting like uh, watching people kind of getting the first couple of comics go through, you gotta get that feel for what the crowd is gonna appreciate on that particular night because it's always different. Um, and I'm almost so the opposite I think now. like. I think I'm almost opposite now. I think I like the the vacuum. I like no impression because as soon as the comic go goes in, up there, it sets an impression. No idea what's gonna work. Just uh, go for it. There, there's yeah, been that's a, a, it's tough. There's been a couple times where I walk in, like uh, at East Village, I did this where I just like stared at the audience for nine seconds because I was like, I don't want anything <laughs> from the previous comic, so I just stared at them. And I was yeah, like, I didn't, I didn't let him like, a don't even try. First. Like, you can't, yeah. you can't do anything. Just sit there and stare at me back, <laughs> like nothing. You get nothing for nine seconds. Then we'll do comedy. <laughs> like it, it's nice sometimes to reset because especially if you're like a different tempo. Trying to go up after Alex Mendoza, like if people <laughs> are laughing at his show, I have nothing to say to those people. So I have to kill the room. I have to kill the room first. Like we're not doing that style of comedy. Nah, 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 nah. I'm not up here. Banana. That's not my show, so I, I have to get that reset. I'm gonna kill this fucking room, and then I'll bring it back a different uh, way. We're gonna revitalize. I'm gonna Frankenstein this room. I'm gonna walk all the people who. <laughs> I'll do what I have to. Uh, anyways, so yeah. Me, well, I. <laughs> okay, go ahead, go ahead. I did a show once where I was up first, and I like. I hadn't done comedy in a while because it was right after Christmas break and finals and everything, and I was like. A month I don't know. I, I didn't even really want to be there. I was just in a bad mood. I was like, oh, I don't feel like doing this, but I, I know I should. I should get back into it. So I hadn't rehearsed my jokes at all, which was, I mean, kind of unprofessional and shitty on yeah. my part. So I got up there and I was just kind of stumbling my way through these jokes about like, I don't know, the internet or whatever. And then yeah. The other people who went up after me were, like, these three middle-aged guys who all had jokes just, like, ragging on millennials. Like, oh, this generation, they're a bunch of fucking pussies with their... Yeah, and I was like, oh, no, this is, this is bad. I'm a millennial. We need to get out of here. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm technically Gen Z, so I'm actually safe, you know? Millennials are pussies. Gen Z is, like, pounding it at the gym. Is it pound, is pounding it? Not, that's not lifting weights. That's like, no, that's something else. You I don't know do why I said that. Pounding that iron today. <laughs> like. There's probably something at the gym that you would pound, right? No if matter what you do at the gym, you're getting arthritis. Don't even worry about it. <laughs> Just revealed that I'm wildly out of shape on this podcast. <laughs> the bus shot won't save you if you start talking about pounding weights. <laughs> I just it's pound okay. it every time I'm at the gym. I just fucking pound it out. Just mulching weights. It's okay. I'm Camera pounding vital. for those pounds. I'm trying to lose those Did pounds. Get in there just evaporate out. weights, bro. <laughs> I've been metastasizing them bitches. Dude, I fucking got a good pound in today, dude. At the gym, dude. <laughs> Actually, I know a couple guys who talk about that. I used to work at out this place, downtown San Jose. Turns out it was also a gay bar. I mean, dude, that's a, a good combination. Gay bar. It was what? really weird. What's really weird is they also squeezed in a museum. I was like, ah. Fucking A, the history of <laughs> A museum of what? Yeah. Just... I was like, who has time when there's a gay bar? <laughs> a museum of fitness. Maybe you go to the bar first, and then you go and you check out the artwork. This is just... all like half true. If you actually go to downtown San Jose, there's an Egyptian museum, and right next door there's a gym where all it's like ninety percent gay guys. I'm pretty sure, and I'm assuming there's a wow. gay bar in there. Because how else are you going to get I mean, your maybe... gym demographic to be ninety percent gay guys? Maybe the museum's like for the lesbians to go on dates. <laughs> It was like a diversity program for the city. Like, look, you can't yeah. have this many gay guys at a gym without a lesbian museum, okay? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Just we have the there. budget. Build the goddamn what museum. The fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Throwing a little something for the ladies. Are you taking civil like, engineering what, in college? Because you like? got this. <laughs> Is that what a stereotype? They like, they like, I don't uh, even know. That's history. <laughs> smart, right? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, Is as I was say. History? Yeah, fuck it. Isn't there an actual stereotype because Cleopatra, that's like one of the most famous like female leaders, even though there was a female emperor. Um, but emperor actually, I think, I think it is. Oh, and uh, what about um, Cleopatra's sister so was also a ruler. So like, there was like famous Egyptian female rulers. So I guess you could kind of see that. I thought the Amazonian was a stereotypical one. I think she was one. a lesbian, though. 
Cleopatra? No, she I mean, was just gonna say, is the song is the song "Walk Like an Egyptian" just about lesbians? <laughs> what? <laughs> They're all walk like an no, Egyptian. I... <laughs> like that dance is conspicuous. Never do that. Never do that again. Never do that again. One more time. Eh? <laughs> that was for the video lit watchers. All right. I don't I know, dude. Said video I was listeners. just curious. I'm not. <sighs> I don't starts. know. I feel like a lot That's of a lot of my friends you know. are just like quiet, artsy lesbians who want to go on like a classy date. Mm. Yeah, it's totally fine. It, it fits that bill. And there's a lot of people in that demographic, and they're upset about the gay gyms everywhere. Uh, <laughs> yeah, they're pissed off. Gym. Yeah, God, it's such it. a good business idea. So you were going into what, a uh, gay bar and a gym at the same time. You guys really got hung up on the gay bar thing. Like that was just I know. Cool. I think Sebastian was was like, five minutes Sebastian's ago. over here developing his business plan right now. <laughs> he's yeah, he's, he's go talk to he, my accountant. I've been seeing him trying to get alone. It's like, bro, all the tables in the bar are just gonna be squat racks, dude. Hey. <laughs> Michael, you and me gotta link up uh, after this. We gotta talk. Anyway, I'm pretty, sh- I'm pretty sure Sebastian just GPS every gay bar in a uh, series, but. <laughs> Let's yeah, get past I'm that. I wanted to. Yeah, let's move to, on, please. <laughs> I want to ask, how is you're going into your junior year now this year? Uh, first. Oh, uh, senior right? year. This is your senior. Oh, senior this is your fuck senior yeah. Year. Woo! Your senior year, you're yeah. on lockdown. You can't even go on campus, or can you? Can you? Man? I I think you. Well, I guess you can go on campus. You can't really. You can't go into any classrooms or anything, mm. probably. Man, I wonder so, what the senioritis kind of is like when you can't even go to the campus. Like, I remember in senior year, I was like, bro, I don't want to go to fucking class, dude. Dude, like, every day is senior What's it like day? when you can't even go? Yeah. Yeah, yeah so the lockdown's really just cutting out the middleman yeah. of yeah, senioritis. Of, of deciding not to go to Real. class. Oh, my gosh. It's like, oh, yeah. it, it spoils some of the fun, though, I think. Because, like, it's like drinking underage. It's fun because it's illegal. It's like ditching's fun because you're not supposed to. If you're supposed to ditch, you should all just show up to school every day. You're like, ha-ha, we're here. As a protest. <laughs> yeah. Like, I didn't bring my laptop. Fuck y'all. I'm just, just gonna disinfect the school here. and just hang out inside. Like, we're going to teach ourselves. What if every student got into the desk and put one laptop at the front and only the teacher was at home? And they just look lazy AF. <laughs> Yo, that would <laughs> be. Like, what the hell, That would teach? be disruptive, bro. <laughs> Like, dude, like the, the teacher, teacher comes on. Comes on. <laughs> I already cringed hard enough watching like my professors try to use a projector or their laptop ever because it was just like, get out of the way and let me do it for you. I couldn't imagine like <laughs> the amount of shit a student would get if they open up a laptop and they can't open the Zoom. But, like, like everybody would just be like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, <laughs> that, that's really what like Zoom classes are. Is it's a big scam to try to get the students to te- show the teachers how to use technology. Yeah. Like it, yep. teaching the students is is secondary to teaching the the teachers how to fucking how to it's use pay, a computer. It's payback for forty years of typing classes. Like, oh yeah, typing classes. <laughs> okay, teachers got to use the internet now. How about that? They're like, ow, <laughs> this wasn't part of the deal. Uh, yeah, it's it's gotta suck. Like, how, I, I think here's a good senior prank: find a COVID-friendly way to get all the students in their classes, and then prank the teachers and be like, uh, "Why are you here?" And they're like, "What?" And they get on the Zoom, which is just a video <laughs> of their class, and they're like, "Where's Why the teacher? This is just disrespectful." Where, where else are we and, supposed to go? And they're calling the other teachers, like, "Yeah, my students too. What the fuck, dude? I didn't get the memo." <laughs> and all these teachers are just panicking. <laughs> Wait, we're, were that would we be fucking to go hilarious. <laughs> It would be funny We're until like, to go back. <laughs> yeah, it'd be funny until like, twelve hundred students get COVID and be like, ugh, not yeah. the best prank. Yeah, I was gonna uh, say if there's a COVID-friendly way yeah, to go not. get into Every a classroom day. with a bunch of people, they just open up school. Yeah, yeah it, it would be funnier just to fix society. <laughs> <laughs> it would be really yeah. funny to not be in lockdown. <laughs> Good point. So, is there anything like social-wise that's changed now, big time, like with the college experience? Because most people don't just go for the learning; it's the experience and the friends and all that stuff. How's the quarantine affecting that? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'm I'm not the best person to ask because I'm I'm not really a party <laughs> animal. I, I'm sure you're yeah. shocked to learn that, but um. <laughs> well, you're working and going no to college at the same time. That's busy, and you're doing standard. You're doing a lot at once. I mean, I can understand it's. You don't easy. go to ragers, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, only really cool people call them ragers. <laughs> Yeah, I well, I mean, I'm back at my parents' house right now, so that's like, I don't know. There's not can. a whole lot of what. Stay as long as you can. 
<laughs> one, yeah. <laughs> one day they'll stop loving you and they'll make you leave. Just stay as long as you can. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, it'll be like 20 years from now. Like, Audrey, I think the quarantine's over. If Can you're you a pro. stop eating my fiber cereal? <laughs> <laughs> Mom, you more well, uh, <laughs> yeah, my my friend told me that uh, he was on he was on a Zoom call for a class, and with Zoom, like you can see everybody's windows and a lot of people have their webcam on and there's a guy in the class who um had his webcam on and he was sitting there and his girlfriend was sitting on his lap and he was feeding her Chex Mix Uh, while his video was running and the professor like asked him multiple times to stop and then after a while she just kicked him out of the class so I mean I think that's uh, that's the ideal college social life going forward it's just like make everyone really uncomfortable with your bizarre yeah. sexual shenanigans. Yeah. Like, what's that going to trans- yeah. craziest thing you can do? He was like hand feeding her Chex Mix? What if someone's just like cooking meth yeah. on their camera? He's like, hey, no, 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 don't cook meth there in my class. <laughs> so, oh, oh, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I just want to, I just want to say something here. Um, that that girl's really brave because when I eat Chex Mix, I'm so particular about the 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 parts of the Chex Mix Good that I point. Yeah, to put in very my mouth. trusting. And he's just grabbing handfuls of it, and that's like, a trusting she, relationship. She just doesn't give a fuck at all. Like, <laughs> yeah, because like the bagel chips absorb the most seasoning, so you need yeah. to eat those oh, and yeah. not like the the, the shitty the little cereal breads, pieces. The little oh, yeah. the breads. Oh, that's you all. Can't, I, I just pick you, those out. You can't neglect it though, because if you don't get a little bit of the bad ones, the good ones won't taste as good by comparison. Mm-hmm. See, I just oh. get all the breads and then I don't eat the rest of the bag. I See, wish I le- just have just the little bread. Could have just bought there. some bread. Nope. See, I learned that about nope. Gardettos because I like the Gardettos, and then I got the all rye bread mix, mm-hmm. where it's just the, the they have it, that. And I almost threw up. I almost threw up. They have after, that, like, bro. Yeah, all oh, they do. And after five, you're like, God, I would fucking kill for a fucking pretzel for a right pretzel, now. Pretzel, yeah. Like, where's a goddamn? Give me anything but a motherfucking rye chip right now. So no, you gotta mm-hmm. have the you rye gotta chips have the variety supreme. is important, dude. But no, I, well, how is this going to translate, though? People doing weird shit on their cameras to get attention. How is it going to translate when we get back into, like, the real world? Because there's already I people, think... like, doing the, like, what happens if you hold up a All Lives Matter sign in Compton and record it? What? Like, there's already people acting outrageous for attention. What's going to happen when it's, like, not just the Zoom stars or the video like, YouTubers trying to do it and the, you know, influencers, but it's, like, everyday college students are just learning that, hey, you got to get attention. You got to stand out. Otherwise, <laughs> you got to do something on wall. outrageous. Yeah. Wait, are people are people opening a Zoom call that everyone in Compton is on, and then they're holding up an All Lives Matter sign in there? I've square? seen them try it. I've seen them try it. No, I don't try that. But there's those like, YouTubers who actually do those videos where they during the like the protest they were going and doing that just to see how people would react, and it's like, jeez, not Christ, great, man. I bet. <laughs> like, yeah, I wonder uh, how this will go. Yeah, it's just the most obscene. A, like, I don't think that have a you positive don't need reaction. to research it. Yeah, you don't need to research it. This is research not you needed. It's what like, what happens if you drink too much acid? Oh, we figured <laughs> it out. Thanks, guy. Good one. You know, no, it's like, it why is this person doing this? Didn't need help to figure out what would happen there. Hmm. Well, let's get onto a positive subject. I don't want to. I don't want to drag up too much time. But you, from what I understood, this is your first presidential election coming up, Audrey. Is that right? Right. Okay, right. mine, t- oh mine too. You got a good what one. A, what a fucking one for a first time, am I right? Like, yeah. For for legal reasons, uh, I've been restricted from voting access till this year, and so I am very excited about it. Uh, I Dang. am so excited, I might vote twice. So I need help, and you, you, Seb... You can't do that. Okay, I, I will vote as many times as Trump is appropriate said good, dude. Just the to ones. the rights, to whatever authorities I validate as a sovereign citizen. But let me first talk to Seb, because Seb, you work for the government. How, how, what's yeah. the best way to vote? How do you make your vote count? How do you get like well, a higher work, weighted vote? How do you get the good votes? I work for city government, first of all. So Same thing. You're the man. Lay it out on the table. Yeah, I'm the mayor. Um, You're basically a general in my eyes because I don't know how yeah. government works. No, I view you going to work as like you like ordering like immigrants like in cages. Yeah, like Sebastian's that. actually president, dude. so. Yeah. So, I call him I call him Generalissimo in case they're listening. Like, actually, he's going to de- Sebastian's going to tell us to vote for him right now. So, I mean, I'm not I'm not running. I Yeah, I'm write a, it in. Since I'm a government employee, I can't run for office in that same government. <laughs> I would have to quit. Ah, so So you do work in the president's office. He just confessed. <laughs> yeah, I drive <laughs> fucking fly to Washington DC. Well, now I don't. I can just zoom uh, to the White House. 
yeah. um, which is great. It saved me so much money in fucking airline tickets. Um, okay. So is it true that only blind people are allowed to count the votes? Uh, no, they have uh, robots do it now, but they don't work. Is it, all auto- is it all automatic? Is it like Scantrons like these at high school? Boop, 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 boop. Do you know? Does anybody know? Yeah. It, wow, it, Scantron. Well, they have, they have like while. vote counting machines, but then they'll also like have people there to like double check kind of that's what happened like with george bush in florida all those years i was ago. gonna say the hanging chads if you remember no I oh don't. yeah okay, michael maybe weird. you explain that one since you brought it up uh, yeah well, let's just say the name and walk away uh yeah <laughs> it's called pulling uh, a grenade on the, the conversation day, audrey you'll learn all about it <laughs> i think you guys remember the good old uh bush versus gore yeah. Election controversy. Yeah, I, uh, I know about hanging chads. Uh, yeah, what? there was a, I, all a I wanted chad. To know about. A chad is like a um, like he, like if you were to punch a hole in something, and that little piece of paper that is now cut out of the paper, hole punched, it doesn't exactly uh, come off completely. Hence, hanging. Uh, it's like a little piece of paper hanging off, and there and is it totally an fucks that. up the machines. Yeah, I think it fucks up the machines. Uh, I believe oh, okay. that was like. They were using that as some sort of uh, some sort Ploy of for uh, detail for controversy. Yeah, exactly. yeah, I'm not not exactly. I just remember I just remember hearing that a lot. And okay, then, uh, so you're saying we should yeah. do Chad stuff? Well, you you uh, have to not at all. Not even close. That, that your ballot is like clean. I'm just describing and what it is. Like, not like folded up and shit. Um, you can only vote the one time. And, can you bring uh, your own ballot? Uh. No. God, could you imagine? <laughs> someone's like, hey, like, mine's on fucking pink paper. Mine's on, yeah. like, this giant mine's novelty check or something. Mine's you on a sticky note. Me. Yeah, mine, mine is just all emojis. Of, uh, it reminds me of that movie Benchwarmers where they have the dude playing the... The, the dude that plays pitcher, he says a birth certificate says, I am 12. He, like, writes <laughs> 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 Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly what it would be like. Uh, Honestly, I put mine on a, yeah. on a pop school stick so it could get wet and be fine. Oh yeah, for for durability. You yeah, my it. my vote's yeah. not getting lost in the rain. You suckers. <laughs> I put mine on a popsicle stick because this election's a joke. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it really. Yeah. The idea of this being the first election that somebody votes in in their life is like so depressing to me. <laughs> I mean, it's depressing to me. Yeah, I yeah. Bet. I'm the one doing it. Like, if you only get to vote on one. Between? Yeah, if you only get to vote on one thing, let's vote on the flavor of apocalypse. <laughs> yeah, basically that's where we're at now. I, I like Joe Biden, man. Honestly, even though he's a creeper, he touches people inappropriately. He uh, doesn't gas people at churches, so I'm like, that's my guy. <laughs> but here's my worry. I'm worried that he's more creeper than he is not gassing people. <laughs> and that, what are you gonna do then? But if he wins, I might name my child Corn Pop. Why would you name Corn Pop? What? Didn't he have some I nemesis named that. Corn Puff or something he talks about? <laughs> Me and Corn Puff yeah, went down the pool and it wasn't good for Corn Puff or something. I don't remember that one. Corn Pop. I don't know what yeah. you're talking about. Man. You haven't heard that interview? He might have he said no. that, but I mean, if you've, I've if only you've heard, heard about Joe Biden it. speak, it's Okay, yeah. Really... Corn Pop. I'm going to call my good Corn Pop. It's funny. you got to hear it. The way he says it is funny, too. Okay, I, I told Corn Pop, you get out of here, bud. I saw something where Joe Biden talks is really funny he sounds like a um like a retired baseball coach in a movie or something like that like i, I don't know yeah to, to me he just sounds like he's, he's like this um he'd be like the character in, a, in like a sports movie that gets brought in to like show the show the young kids how it's done or something and then like he says something racist and then the kids have to like teach him that racism is wrong while he teaches them about baseball i might Coming vote for soon, corn pop theaters how funny it would it be if everybody voted for Corn Pop and he beat Trump? It's like, oh, look who's a bad guy after all, Biden. Corn Pop wins. <laughs> the, have fun at the pool. Because Corn voting. Pop's fucking yeah. president now. <laughs> that would be a cool turn of events. Medium. That would be so much better than any other possible option right now. I don't know what Corn Pop's been up to for the last 60 years since Joe Biden beat his ass at a pool. But you know what? <laughs> He's got to be a better option. Yeah, Jesus Corn Christ. Pop's the Libertarian Party candidate. <laughs> He's a sovereign citizen. He doesn't give a fuck. Yeah. Corn Pop. 
he was. I keep thinking of the cereal right now. He was a delegate right in Iowa in that same summer that Joe Biden beat his ass. So I want to pre-register for the 2020 election. <laughs> Dude, the all I can thing. think about is like a box of corn pops on the podium right now. Like just. <laughs> what if it was an actual box sense. of corn pops and That's Joe like Biden was pop. losing his mind, and then the box of corn pops still won. <laughs> I mean, it's the only cereal to have that foil bag on the inside, so there might be some secret going on here. Everything else has that clear plastic. I never understood that, but how do they have the budget? Is what I want to know. Everyone else, like, yeah, the that's cheapest what I'm saying. Like, plastic. Dude, I might like go the... get some fucking corn pops later, dude. I haven't had God. them in a minute. They sound kind of good right now. You know, we've referenced twice now cereal, especially artificial fiber cereal. <laughs> I think we need to get to the last segment before we crash yeah. this thing. Before, I was supposed to say something before we transition here. That's the lamest name for a cereal ever. You just corn took popcorn pop. and you just switched the fucking word. Lame. Porn cop? Porn cop. <laughs> porn. porn cop. Maybe That's Joe who Biden we should vote for. That's who we got to vote for. Porn cop. <laughs> we have the wrong guy this whole time. Oh, What if there's some guy whose name's Corn Cop? What if he was meaning to say Porn Cop? He's so yeah. happy. He's like, oh, Joe Biden got it wrong. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, let's get into this, off. dude. So, you want to introduce it? This is your segment, man. I feel bad every time. Oh, dude, we got a fucking battle of the brands coming at you guys today. Uh, I believe we're going with uh, the best artificial food item as uh, as the choice of, of, of debate here today. Uh, I would I would like to open the floor to you guys. I, I, I don't want to give my choice away first. I want to see what you guys have to say here. So, I just want to say just because it's like clearly because of based on use, protein powder. Protein powder is my favorite artificial food. It comes in every flavor. I have one in my house right now. It's chocolate peanut butter, and it's better than anything I've had in my life. I, if I could eat only protein powder all day without having insanely dangerous levels of diarrhea, I would. It is so amazing. It's the best. Protein powder. Okay. <laughs> I, I always thought that stuff was like made out of How's like ground up turkey or some shit like that. Is it artificial? <laughs> no. No, most of it is maltodextrin. It's really not good for you, uh, most huh. of it. You, you have to pay a lot and look around for good stuff to get good quality stuff that's not artificial. But you can get it made from a bunch of different things. Uh, whey, I like say, I, milk, I use a, soy. There's legumes. There's nut-based proteins. Mm -hmm. there's I would say I use the uh, – I have a vegan-based protein right now because the whey protein was – it messes with my – my body doesn't really handle that the best, and so I switched it up. This is – I think it's made out of peas. Well, um, I, I it have tastes one. Horrible. I have one. It's it's artificial, but it's made from organic materials. What they do is they take pituitary glands uh, from sperm whales, and you have to get them while they're a teenager. So they have to hunt out and kill the teenage ones first. But if you get it, <laughs> that's not just jacked up. <laughs> I say, what Could the you fuck imagine? are you drinking, bro? Could like, you that's some black market protein powder over there. You got. Yeah, I just get more effects when I stack that with my shark brains. <laughs> I'll mix them together. Yeah. Put them in bowls of peanut butter, dude. You get jacked. Uh, what do you got, Seb? Artificial food item. What do you got for debate? Um, I'm kind of a similar note, I guess, with something that pretends to be something it's not. I think the um, like the impossible burgers you can get at some of the fast food places. Have now. you had I it? Have you actually had it? I, I had the Burger King Impossible Whopper, and then I had the one that, um, the one that Jack in the Box did, which I think is Beyond uh. Meat. Um, I thought the uh, Beyond, I thought the uh, Impossible was better than Beyond Meat. Um, how does it taste? But it's crazy. Well, it, it's weird because when you put it in a fucking, in the, especially in the context of a fast food burger, which is like all fake to begin with, you don't mm. really notice because it's like the meat isn't really what you're tasting. You're tasting like the fucking sauce or whatever. Bullshit and it's the only thing that's not plastic, technically. Or what is yeah, it made exactly. of? What's that stuff made of? I oh, I have no idea. I haven't tried to find out because I feel like I don't want to know. So your favorite artificial food is <laughs> Travis Scott Burger. All right, what you got? <laughs> it's <No>. lit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I like how with Impossible Burgers, they, they emphasize how realistic it is. Like, I think they put beet juice in it so that it bleeds when yeah, you cook they, it. Yeah. I don't think they know what vegetarians want. <laughs> <laughs> they want the, the experience. <laughs> they like it when it yeah, suffers. We, we created an artificial animal in a lab and then raised it and then killed it. <laughs> it's like the West World That's what you want. Food. If you put the spatula down, it'll actually move. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> it begs for you its life as it, it sizzles. 
and none of the meat, all of the suffering. All of the guilt. <laughs> it's <a> vegan burgers. <laughs> Do you want to remind yourself why you went vegan? <laughs> <laughs> yeah i can't do it i can't do it i haven't tried the yeah, impossible I'd, burgers i'd say for mine uh fruit snacks and i you know i think the fruit snacks Dang. that are shaped like fruits are cool because you can pretend that you live in this like dystopian society <laughs> where fruit has been outlawed fruit and rations. the government is creating this like fake fruit to keep everyone in line like this is fruit <laughs> So okay, I think you're eating weed gummies because you're getting up with some shit. <laughs> <laughs> and the more you eat, the less you eat, and then you just fall asleep. I like asleep those little, yeah, I like the little fruit snacks that look like little blueberries, and little oh, cherries. Yeah, yeah. Oh, like you're like, oh, man, fruit I'm snacks just... are the best. I take it back. I don't want to get buff anymore. I just want to eat fruit snacks all day. Oh um, God. I, I, I do that. really like the idea of like a distant future where there's just like no more real fruit, and I'm just imagining like like a, a parent telling their child like. Oh, well, you know, back in back in the day, these used to be, you know, bigger and juicy. It was so incredible. They've already done that. They've already phased out one thing. When's the last time you ate a real worm? I don't Yo, think that I have. yeah, you blew my mind, bro. <laughs> people, right. people, in the, people in the people in the wild eat worms all the time. Uh, the neon Good worms, point. though. Yeah, yeah. Actually, uh, sour worms. Why are we playing around? I, Put some sour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Baby. Of I course, know, that's yeah, yeah. I, I, I want to. Uh, you guys, uh, you guys all skimmed over a very important artificial food item in, uh, in the world that I think we we all have experienced and loved, and that is Velveeta cheese, dude. Oh. No. Oh, yeah. Oh. yeah oh, instant no. Oh, instant Velveeta goodbye. shells and cheese. Oh. Fucking amazing. Um. Oh, any man. sort of like artificial cheese sauce, I'm about it. I know I people like you. Stuff. I've stopped talking to most of them. That is gross. Yeah, I know it's horrible. I don't eat it all the time, but man, when I'm feeling like it, there's nothing like uh, just squeezing out that that gooey cheese sauce. Oh, on those oh no! It is some great shit. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ! I just talked about the YMH podcast. Fuck, man. Dude, oh. we're talking about liquid <laughs> cheese, my dude. You guys are talking about vegan fake bullshit. I don't give a fuck about that. I'm like all about the cheese sauce. I'll say this: Is liquid it, cheese vegan? Yeah, is Velveeta I don't think so at all. Hey, Siri. I don't think so at all. It doesn't come from animals. It might be, actually. <laughs> is Velveeta it surely vegan? doesn't come from animals. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's yeah, impossible. about this. I don't think it is. Well, I, that's the thing I understand, the, the taunt with the naming of these things. Impossible. Like, they're in I didn't know they the cheese sauce right. would be so negatively received on the podcast today. I thought I would have some Jeez. supporters here. I feel on an, I'm like on an island right now. <laughs> You're the only one be. that enjoys Velveeta shells if, and cheese. If you ever bring Velveetas to my house, you're going to be kept on an island for the rest of your life. How dare you? That is disgusting, bro. You get some mild-aged cheddar, you melt it down into cubes, you put it in a pan full of milk and butter, and you melt it down. You nah, make a nice man. cheese. I need that stuff. packet. Mm-hmm. I need that mm-hmm. gooey packet. I gotta. It's like toothpaste just like out of the... Oh, it's so Ooh. good. Did you eat Gokers as a kid? Oh, yeah. In the yeah. freezer, my guy. We're going to cancel them yeah. first. Okay, actually, if freezer you now. Go, you if you eat a Gogurt and it's not frozen, go fuck yourself, yeah. man. If like, you're eating room temperature Gogurt, you're a goddamn Ed yeah. Bundy of your Get generation. Get out of my face. Lock if that person If they're frozen, you don't know what you're doing, dude. I had a joke I wrote a while ago that I never did because none of my friends thought it was funny that was like, why are kids the ones who have portable yogurt? They don't have anywhere to be. <laughs> <laughs> That's so true. That's so true. That's a good why, is, <laughs> why is Chobani always in a cup? I need that shit to go. You know what like... needs to be the two beef tartar. <laughs> Michael right, they, is lost. These, he laughed too hard. These kids aren't out there like like oh fuck I gotta get I gotta I gotta get to work but I don't, <laughs> I don't have time. <laughs> Get yeah, I'm I'm sitting at a lunch boss. table, but I gotta move really quick. So let me drink this Danimals before I go back to class. <laughs> so, uh, Michael, you did a little time warp there. I don't know exactly what happened. Uh, I think mine might have skipped a little bit, but I caught Chobani of what you said. <laughs> oh, uh, I was just saying, um, why is Chobani in a cup? But we have, uh, you know, we have Gogurt and Danimals yogurt and all this yeah. fucking. We got these little. So you're a big like fan of her little, jokes. I like you're the real fucking fan flip joke. things. Have you seen those? <laughs> it's like yogurt. Yeah, and you yeah, peel yeah. Away a little granola yeah. or whatever the fuck, and you can add it in. I like That's that. the death of yogurt companies. That's the death of yogurt companies because it's the ultimate concession. The yogurt's not enough. 
And they're just saying, it's like, we know this yogurt will never please you. You will <laughs> yeah. never be satisfied. Please with, accompany yeah, it with this. I'm down with like, the chunks of fruit in there. I like a little chunkiness. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I like Isn't that the whole OJ. premise of frozen yogurt places, though? Is like, hey, we know this is kind of shitty on its own. This is why we have 50 <laughs> oh, different like toppings. <laughs> That is true, yeah. <laughs> Do you think if you went in like, there and just got the frozen yogurt and nothing else, they would just like kick you? Like, oh, you're being judged, a hundred percent. They would call nine one one. We have a fucking. I don't know what this guy did, but it's there's awesome. a silent alarm. <laughs> there's a pervert in here. <laughs> this is a family restaurant. <laughs> we have some kind. Of, I don't know what. I I like. did that once. I went to Cold Stone Creamery and I just got vanilla ice cream in a cone. And oh my everybody, God. everybody in line looked at me like I, I had that like serious. Everybody thinks oh, dude, I'm gonna kill them. You moment. got, you it got was put really on a weird. list after that. I had to give them like a twenty dollar tip to get them to stop singing about it. They're like, "What a cuck, vanilla only for the cuck boy." And I was like, "Stop singing, asshole!" <laughs> Not the best. You have to pay in cash so they can't track you down through your credit card. <laughs> <laughs> the NSA knew about it that minute. <laughs> awesome. So this has been awesome. I know we're probably running way too long, though. Uh, what do you guys got for takeaways? And uh, we'll do Audrey last since it's her first time on the podcast. Thank you. Uh, I would say that my takeaway is that I'm really down for the boots and puss um, <laughs> remake. There, that sounds awesome. I also stand by my decision with the uh, Velveeta cheese. I think it's the best artificial food item. Uh, and it was really fun having Audrey on the podcast. They made me laugh hard uh, quite a few times. Uh, first time meeting you today. It was really fun. And I'm glad you came on. And, yeah, I think that's it for me. What you got, Zeb? Um, I, God, Velveeta just really it makes me want to vomit just thinking about it. Yeah. Um, Remember how excited we were? We're like, oh, we're going to talk about food right at the end. And then Michael was like, hey, guys, remember Velveeta <laughs> cheese on hot sidewalk? And we're like, oh, okay, Jesus Christ, dude. And Sorry, yeah, Steve. I think my other takeaway is um, I, I hadn't really thought about how fucking insane it is that the realism of Beyond Meat is like kind of the point until you said it, Audrey. <laughs> and it really yeah. is so fucking weird. I'd never thought about that before. Yeah. So thank you to for that. Suffrage Farms, Impossible Burger. <laughs> Uh, that's, not good. <laughs> that's that's all I got. Uh, takeaways, yeah. Once again, thank you for coming on, Audrey. Uh, I knew it was gonna be funny just from spending a little bit of time talking with you, but uh, when you said boots and puss, I think I mean, you would change like my the, life. The, the <laughs> <laughs> oh, for, well, if if Spotify will allow it, for sure. <laughs> I mean, we live in Trump presidency, baby. We can call it pussy, pussy, pussy. We can get away with it. So let's do it. <laughs> so, yeah, my biggest takeaway is thank you for agreeing to do this. And also, nobody watching or listening is going to appreciate the fact that you did like two hours of IT before we started. So thank you for that also. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Man. Well, you know, I recorded all of that. So we can just include that. You guys have a yeah. Patreon. We can put it as a bonus episode. Yeah, bonus Unedited podcast. version. Exactly. We'll put it on the OnlyFans. <laughs> yeah, baby. <laughs> awesome. So what's your takeaway? Away from first time being on the Calvary podcast um i had a great time this is really fun thanks for having me on um i like that we went through all the things that make you a cuck which include <laughs> having a cat that's longer than your girlfriend and uh getting <laughs> vanilla ice cream at cold stone <laughs> there's so much more you forgot about. That, that's it <laughs> I'm glad there's one thing you're paying attention to during the goddamn show. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's thanks so for going, funny. everybody. Thanks for listening. Peace out. Stay hydrated. Mucho take it easy. Hey, everybody. Thanks for listening to the episode. Make sure to check us out on Instagram at Cowboy Rowdy Podcast. Also on Facebook and YouTube at The Cowboy Rowdy Podcast. Check me out on Facebook and Instagram at KMBZ.Berry. And see me on YouTube at CB Comedy. I'm just below the little Indian kid who makes funny videos in his room. Uh, you can follow me at the Ghost of Anthony on Instagram and at Young Bathman on Twitter. And follow me, Sebastian, on Instagram at Seinfeld. And you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at underscore mbooth. <laughs> <laughs>